How about now? Any better? Uh, keep talking. Any Turn better? How about Turn now? <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. And I'm talking to the one, the only, Kim Commando. You know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm jittery and, and uh, feeling hot flashes all over just talking to you. I'm so nervous. Too. My first time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I will tell everybody who you are. Okay, Kim Commando. If uh, if they haven't heard you in the past, they will hear you in the future because you're going to be uh, starting this Saturday on KBZ from That's noon right. from noon till two. That's right. Okay, and uh, you'll take their calls and uh, and beat them badly with uh, computer knowledge. Uh, you know, after all, I am the personal digital goddess. The personal digital goddess. Yeah, but I don't. You know what? I just don't answer computer questions. Uh -huh. Although people do call in with tons of computer questions. But, you know, last weekend I took a call from a, a gentleman who, uh, his wife hasn't slept with him for three weeks. Okay, so you're like a Dr. Dr. Joy Brown well, kind of yeah, thing, but too. As it turns out, she won't sleep with him because he bought a computer. <laughs> and she yeah. is upset. So, you know, I solved that trauma. Uh, also, you know, how, to, how do you buy a computer? What's the best computer to buy, a Mac or a PC? And, you know, how do I get Windows 95 to work? And... You know, the, the questions just go on and on and on, and it, it's absolutely incredible because most people, or finding a lot of people, are now interested in how do you make money on the Internet because of all the hype that's out there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it kind of runs the whole gamut, and then I pull the computer news of the week, and we do our newsreel, and, you know, the bottom line is that we talk about computers, but it's also a lot of fun. Okay. You know, we had a, another computer show, but... Uh I, I, I heard your show, and I thought it was a, a much, much better show. So we, uh, we, we you know, made the deal and everything else, and you, you decided to, to come aboard with us, and I, I'm really pr I'm glad that you did. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be it fun, fun, I think. And, and my show is better, in my humble opinion. <laughs> well, so my, in my humble opinion, it is better, too. That's the reason why <laughs> we chose it. But um, Now, you offer so much more, though, as far as in your show. I mean, you've got, you've got uh, I mean, you send stuff. You give free stuff away. I mean, people, people can uh, contact you on the, on the Internet and, uh, and talk to you oh, directly yeah. and all that good stuff. Because no matter how many phone lines we have, I mean, the lines get jammed up. And so what I tell people is to always make sure that they call early on in the show if they want to get on the air with me and get an instant answer to any, you know, doggone computer question that they have. Uh -huh. But in addition to that is, uh, you know, any time that they have a question during the week, they can tap into myself, and we have 23 expert commandos on America Online who will answer their computer questions, or they can send me email to helpmekim at AOL.com. Okay. And so, you know, there's many ways that I'm out there, and... You know, obviously, we're on the Internet with our homepage and on the Microsoft Network. Uh, and so, you know, we're really out there to help people get control of this technology because it's, you know, it's becoming just as common as using a telephone. But unfortunately, you know, not everybody sees it that way because a lot of people are still afraid of the technology. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's, that's the, the worst thing, isn't it, as far as the, uh, the fear of computers? Because that seems to be it around here. If, if anybody has any fear of computers, they can't seem to do anything on the thing. Now, oh, yeah. what, 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 what do you, yeah, well, what do you do? Well, how do you, how do you get people to, to be, say, uh, not afraid of computers? Well, you have to look at it as any device or any electronic appliance. I mean, whether it's your washer, your dryer, your television. And what I always tell people who are afraid of computers, I mean, I did an interview in Los Angeles last week where the woman uh, called the show and said, you know, Kim, I went out and I bought a computer, and it's in my spare bedroom, and I'm afraid to even go in the bedroom. <laughs> okay. That yeah. woman has a lot more problems than just being afraid of yeah. a computer. Yeah. But as I reminded her, who has the ultimate control over that computer? It's exactly. you because you get to unplug it. So there's <laughs> nothing to be afraid of. You get to reboot it. You reboot the, yeah, you know, boot reboot it. it. Yeah, boot that baby. Okay, um, I got to ask you. Okay, there's a lot of lot of love going on on the on the, on the net uh, on the web. So what 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 kind of stories have you got as far as that goes? Well, Love Online, I mean, we have one uh, story that has been happening on our show for the past three months, and then I'll, I'm going to tell you one, I'm going to tell you another one. Uh, one is that this guy sends me an email, and he's having a real hard time. He's been married for 15 years. He's got two kids, lives in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, wait a minute. Am I talking to Dr. Joy Brown or Kim Commando? Kim Commando. But okay, I just want to know. This All is right. a killer story, okay? Um and his wife is tapping late at night on the computer. He doesn't know what she's doing, so what he does is he signs on using her account onto America Online. <laughs> Bottom line 
is that she's been hanging out in these chat rooms called Married But Cheating. Ah. And she's been having a few virtual affairs, online affairs. All right? Okay. So what he does is he goes to work, and he signs on to America Online using, of course, a fictitious account, hunts her down in these chat rooms, strikes up an affair with her, and now she wants to meet him. <laughs> this is kind of like a pina colada song here. Huh, it okay. is. It is a pina colada song. So we still don't know what happens to Clueless in Charleston, and that's his signature. Uh, but hopefully he'll be calling the show and giving us an update. He doesn't call every week, but every once in a while he does call, and I always chastise him because he should just meet her, and he's being a wimp about it, and it's it's just it's really a sad story. But then there's also uh, the other things that are happening online. I mean, people do get married on the Internet, but, you know, the online affairs are also rampant. There was an example of extortion and sexual intrigue on America Online, too. It seems to be all happening on America Online. <laughs> but in the marriage but cheating room, all right. the same room where Clueless and Charleston's hanging out, there is a veterinarian who's 29 years old. I should say past tense because I don't think he's there anymore. But his name is Kevin. But when he signed on to America Online, he assumed this, uh, you know, this virtual vixen personality, and he called himself Rita. So he'd go in the chat room and get all these guys riled up under the name of Rita, and then these guys would send Rita, you know, pictures and and so on with, you know, very explicit, detailed messages about wanting to meet Rita. Uh huh. And what Kevin would do, would uh, he would write these pe- these men back and say, I'm Rita's husband, and I'm a policeman in your hometown. And if you don't pay me $2,000, buddy, I'm going to spill the beans on you. Now, see, that that now that's one thing that, that kind of scares you about online as far as, you, you know, you can be talking to anybody, but these, these, these people can be whatever they want to be. And you it, don't know who they are. Yeah, exactly. You have no idea. You have no idea what they look like. You have no idea what sex they are. You have no idea, you know, anything of anything. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, a scary thing when you think about it. But then again, it, if you don't look at it as seriously as a lot of these people do, you could have some fun. So. Well, it, you know, it can be fun. But, you just, but there's a lot of wackos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's there's true. There's a lot of wackos when you walk down the street. Yeah. But there's also a lot of wackos online. Um, I went into the a chat room, I and, you know, here I am, Pollyanna, right? Okay. okay. I walk in the chat room, and, hi, I'm Kim Commando. I'm looking for people to appear on my Fox television segment about, <laughs> you know, finding love online. And if you found uh, love online, please contact me. We'd like you to be part of our show. Okay. And that's all I said. Now, in my email box, or in my mailbox, I got a message from a, uh, a gentleman who said that he uh, runs an exclusive escort service that satisfies the needs of women like myself. <laughs> oh, like yourself. I okay. did get one legitimate couple who met online, uh-huh. and they, uh, they are married now. And she was living in Dallas, and he was living in Phoenix, and they met online. They, and then, you know, it was love at first sight when they finally saw each other. And then there was also, I got an email uh, from a woman uh, that included a naked photo of herself, and oh. she said she wanted to date me. Wanted to date you. Yeah, wanted to date me. Okay. Well, you know, not my style, honey, but, you know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the bottom line is you got to be careful, especially if you have kids. Yeah. You we... know, then, you know, luckily there are parental controls and all this stuff. But that's just an example of what we talk about. <laughs> well, you know, that's got to be one, because you're on TV, too. I mean, you do, you do the Fox thing. You also do, you have done, I hate to say this, but you have done an infomercial or two. Yeah. Just for just for wonderful products, of course. Oh, just my products. Yeah, okay. Wonderful products. Now, you know, infomercials, they get a bad rap, and, you know, well, Dan Warwick, many of you them gotta, deserve that bad rap. Deanne Warwick, you got to thank her for that, the, you know, the, the super highway she took the uh, in the uh, thing to. But anyway, um, people have seen you. They know what you look like. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to I, I don't want to give you a big head or anything, but, uh, you, you know, you're an attractive woman. So they see you, and they... Uh, start you know talking to you on this 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 line or whatever. Now, it, don't you get a lot of wackos that way though? Isn't that kind of scary for you in, in a way? Yeah, I get wackos, and uh, we also do our email letter of the week. Yeah. And our, an example of an email letter of the week is from this uh, this guy in Seattle who sent me a letter and and uh, and said he had a special place for me in his heart. Uh-huh. Well, actually, it was in his collection. He has. Uh, flats from Oprah Winfrey and uh, high heels from Deborah Norville. Of course, when she was on the Today Show, 
told me that. Uh-huh. And he had a special place in his collection for my four-inch uh, red pumps. Oh, okay. And he has a shoe fetish. I mean, the guy's name is Antoine. So, <laughs> you know, I helped Antoine on the air. I said, you know what, Antoine, I would be, you know, more than happy to help satisfy your fantasy. I want to chain you up, Antoine. I want to take some crazy glue, and I'm just going to glue these shoes to the bottom of your feet. And so that this way you can walk around in high heels and know what it, what it really feels like. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, what you know, was, his, but what was his response to that, by the way? Well, it's, you know, but that's the way you have to do yeah, it. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. And, but we, uh, but of course, we do get into the, as I mentioned earlier, you know, buying the right computer, using the computer that you have, and uh, how do you tweak it so that you get the most out of it. Okay. And, uh, and that's really what, you know, what people want to know. Right. And besides that, you're you're a, a tough Jersey woman, so you can handle anybody, you know. So, yes. that's what I'm told. <laughs> Don't anyway. mess with me. Don't mess with the commando. I mean, with a name like that. And by the way, I did I did find out, because you told me <laughs> that your real name is Kim Commando. And I, that that is that is hard to believe. Kim Commando was born with that. I know. You know. I just, how do you well, think I, I feel? Well, you know, like I said, well, I, I told you, Oscar Osborne. I mean, I was born with that. So I mean, how do you think? I, well, we we know how each other feels, I guess. But I Commando, know. I don't know. That's that's you know. I had well, the Commando's ask. good, though. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when I, I used to work for IBM in marketing, and I would call, uh, you know, potential customers and say, you know, hi, Kim Commando here. I would get through to, like, Mr. Big. Oh, really? Just because he, somebody thought that somebody was playing a joke on him. <laughs> yeah. You know, kind of okay. like your suits are ready at Kmart. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I, I could see that. Now, how, let me ask you this question. How did you get started in all this? I mean, I, you, you sold computers or what? Well... I've been on a computer since I was nine years old. Okay. And, I, you know, any good woman will never tell you how old she is. Right. Uh, I've been on a computer for over 20 years, if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got it. <laughs> okay, I know it's morning, but everybody pull out your calculators. Yeah. And you, uh, well, about nine years old, my mother was uh, on the Unix development team at Bell Laboratories. So our weekends of bonding, she would take me down to Bell Labs. Okay. And I would play on their computer. So I went to college at the ripe age of 15 and ended up with a degree in uh, computer science. Did the corporate route, went to work for IBM, uh, got tired of that, went over to AT&T, got tired of that, went over to Unisys Corporation, uh, sold mainframes and uh, aerospace engineering computers. Okay. And while I was working for Unisys, somebody said to me, you know, you have a great voice. You should be on radio. So I knocked on our local talk radio station's door, KFYI, and said, I don't know anything about talk radio, but I got a voice, and I can tell stories, and... <laughs> you can tell things, so you make people listen, obviously. Yeah, so. give me a show. And then a okay. uh, TV station saw me doing the radio show and said, gosh, you know, you have a face for television. And at the time, I was writing uh, columns, you know, newspaper columns, which I still do today, although we've expanded our reach and uh, we're into family PC now, electronic retailing as well as if you're ever on an airplane, you can probably read a column that I wrote in, uh, you know, TWA, Continental, America West. The list just goes on all the different places you can actually, you know, tap into our resources. Okay, okay. Well, you were blessed with some talent, and uh, luckily uh, the talent is going to be on KBZ. Yeah, this is great. If I can just say one thing, Oscar, is that sure. if they do need, you know, if they want to call because you... Unfortunately, are not carrying the show live, but we won't get into that now. Uh, well, but yeah, but okay, if they want to call you, they can still <laughs> they call you. They have to call. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is toll-free, 888-TALK-TO-KIM, uh, and that's the number two. And so it's 888-TALK-TO-KIM, and they have to call 7 to 9 Pacific, because uh, that's when I am actually live in the studio. Okay. And that's Saturday mornings, of course. Of course. But they can always send me email during the week, too. Now, what, what about that as far as when you, uh, do you take email at all, uh, you know, wh- while you're on the air, or you just wait, wait till afterwards to uh, check your email? Oh, we wait till afterwards. It's, you know, it, I got enough to handle with the uh, all the phone calls coming in. Yeah. And I am a blonde, so you have to remember that. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, you, have you, you noticed only a woman with blonde hair can say that? Yeah. You know, a guy okay. will say, oh, she's a blonde, and then all of a sudden, you know. <laughs> 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 but it's... Uh, no, email is helpmekim at AOL.com. We answer that. And, you know, give us a few days uh, to answer the email, as well as we have a free newsletter. And to subscribe to that, all you have to do is send mail to uh, Clinic News. And Clinic is spelled with a K because I kind of have this K fetish. Yeah. 
So it's uh, K-L-I-N-I-C News at AOL.com. Just say subscribe to the column, and you'll get it free every week. Now, the, the program, of course, is called Kim Commando Computer Clinic, which is all spelled with Ks. Yes. Well, so, you know, so it, it makes the English teacher upset. But, you know, other, other than that, I don't think it really offends anybody. It's cute. Yeah. Very. With a K. With a K, yeah. Now, what about any, any more stories you want to share before you go? Oh, I think they should listen to the show. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, thanks. I'm wonderful. Yeah, really. I'm well, humble. Well, <laughs> I appreciate you talking with me. But, you know, you do have to, you know, if somebody's out there buying a computer right now, just, you know, seriously, that they might want to wait till August because there's going to be some price decreases. Oh, really? Uh, sometime in August, as well as in the fall, you're going to start seeing more and more computers inside televisions doesn't mean you should buy them, just means you should wait. Uh, let's see, here are some other common questions. Apple is not going out of business. You know, they are still going to be hanging around for a while, so you shouldn't be afraid of that. All right. I heard that like a year ago, though. That was like a year. That yeah, they're not going out. But they, you know, they're, they're letting other companies make their computers is oh, what they're right. doing, and they're going okay. to be focusing on the high-end desktop publishing systems, which, you know, what they're great at. Let me, wonderful machine. Let me ask you this question. I mean, I've got to ask you this question because I've, I've asked other people in the computer business about this, and I get different answers from everybody. Uh, what do you think of Windows 95? I mean, just to, you know, I know that's kind of a big statement. I think but, it's great. Okay. I think it's a wonderful product. And, uh, you know, what you can do with Windows 95, you might, I think the best feature is finally being able to name files so that they mean something. Right. You know? We, uh, uh, no, but it does me, make life a lot easier as far as keeping programs open. But, you know, you can't believe what Microsoft says about it, that you only need four megs of RAM inside right. your computer to use it. Right. I mean, you need a lot more than that. Right. You know, eight is a minimum. But I think it's a great product. What have you heard negative well, about the, it? Well, I, I used it for a while, and I had to switch back to 3.1. Yeah. That's only because you didn't have me in your life. Well, okay, because I had some old programs that they were DOS-based programs, and they would not work for me in Windows 95. Well, you can fix that, though. You can? Yes. So I should have called you. Yes, and the way to fix it, uh, if anybody's interested, they can always look it up online or go to their local libraries. I wrote a whole story about this for Family PC. Oh, sure. A couple of months back. But you, know, you know how long I've been, I've been, I've been going. I, the, the process I had to go through to <laughs> to switch everything back in the memory I had to bring. Oh it's man, it's a nightmare. It was, yeah. I mean, it, it truly is a nightmare if you want to switch back. And there is a way too that you could run Windows 3.1 or Windows 95. Okay. So you can keep both on your machine if that's huh. what you want. Well, you and you and me need to talk some more. I guess I got to call the show, huh? You got to call. The show. <laughs> you might go to the top of the queue though, Oscar. What's that? Now, tell them you're a friend. You'll go to the top of the queue. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but as my mother told me, she's, I, you know, I said, when are you going to get Windows 95, Mom? And she said, well, you know, I don't know if I should buy it yet. And I said, why? And she said, well, you know, it's, it's 1996. It's outdated. Yeah. Well, so, sure. which, you know, they are coming out yeah, with a new are. version. Now, I, th I heard that, that uh, 96 wasn't coming out, though, until 95 was totally perfected. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which they're still working on, too. I mean, yeah, okay. It does have some glitches. Okay. All right. And well, at least you admit that, because I, I mean, I thought it was just me that was the total glitch, but I guess you know the other people had some troubles with it too. Yeah, so. it, it has some problems. I mean, I have, uh, you know, I have problems with software. You know, re most recent examples that there's this product that everybody's touting right now that they say is the greatest thing to hit the street, and it's called Times Up, and it's for parents so that they can control the time okay. that kids, kids spend on their PC. Yeah. Well, it's a nightmare. Really? Yeah. I mean. It's a nightmare if you want to keep it on your computer, but if you go to take it off your computer, right? you have to reinstall Windows 95 in order to have it happen right. Oh, good, good. Yeah, so it's one of those things that if you put it on, you better want to keep it, kind of like your experience with Windows 95. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, the, the one thing you told me as far as uh, being able to play, have uh, 3.1 and Windows 95 on, yeah, that, that's something I definitely have to look into because I did like Windows 95. It just wouldn't run any of the programs that I needed to to work with, you know. Well, so. there are ways to tweak that, and it's not that hard to do. Okay. Using Windows 95, and you give me a call sometime, I'll help you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. But I will, I will definitely listen to the show, and hopefully everybody else does too. They okay. will. And it's on from 12 to 2, Saturday mornings, or Saturday afternoons, I guess. And if they want to call you, once again, it will be, what, 7 o'clock your time? Yeah, 7 to 9 Pacific time. Okay, so, and so Pacific, the, uh, so it'll be... And the number is 888-TALK-TO-KIM, and, and the number 2. Okay, that'd be nine, nine to twelve. Okay, nine. Thank you. It would be nine to twelve Eastern time, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Eight, no. Wait a minute. 
Yeah. I know it's early, Oscar, but work with me. <laughs> <laughs> Seven to nine Pacific, ten to noon Eastern. Ten to noon. Okay, I'm sorry. I was I was off. I was off an hour there somewhere. <laughs> Get another I was giving you coffee, a, I was giving you a bonus hour, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Kim. Thank you. Take care.